Hi, welcome to DrSecrets.com. I'm DR, and today we're going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis. This is a chronic inflammatory condition, primarily the joints, but it's not only restricted to joints, it can also affect other tissues such as your lungs, causing restrictive patterns, and it can also affect um, your mucous membranes, causing things like dry eyes and dry mouth. But predominantly, the, the most dominant feature of it is hot, red, swollen, very painful joints. And this is caused by um, your immune system going haywire and producing um, something that we can measure called rheumatoid factor, which I'll just call RF. And the problem with this um, production is that your immune system starts recognizing components of your tissues as some kind of invader or foreign insult. So your own immune system starts to attack your joints and sometimes some of the other tissues as I was explaining. <clears throat> but the, the first couple episodes of rheumatoid, it can be difficult to differentiate whether it's actually rheumatoid or some other type of arthritis like a gout attack or um, say ordinary wear and tear osteoarthritis. So to illustrate a case, um, which brought this whole topic to mind this week is I saw a lady uh, that woke up one morning with intense pain in one of her hands and multiple joints in, in her fingers, swollen, red, hot, and extremely exquisitely painful. And, if, and less so on the other side, there were a few on the other hand as well. So she was seeing at an outpatient department and they weren't quite sure what had caused the um, this uh, intense joint pain. So one explanation that was proffered to her is that Perhaps it was a, a gout flare. So I saw her a couple days later because she was instructed to go back to see her family doctor to follow up and see how you're doing. And when I saw her, they put her on some anti-inflammatories and the, the pain was getting better, but you could still see some residual smoldering um, redness in, in some of the joints and they were still kind of boggy and tender. So the first thing that struck me is that that was unlikely to be gout. Um, Gout will also tend to cause the uh, joint to become red, hot, swollen, and tender. But typically it tends to be one joint at a time and usually bigger joints. In this case, it was just all these little small joints and it was had a symmetry to it in the sense that it wasn't just on one side, it, there was some on the other side as well. So I was quite suspicious from that history. Also because I knew her, I knew that she had a chronic um, history of having dry eyes and that she also had um, some lung disease, which was uh, on testing a restrictive pattern. So tying that all together, um, I decided to send her for lab work to check her uric acid level and to check for this thing called the rheumatoid factor. Um, so not surprisingly, the lab work came back this week showing that um, the uric acid level was normal, so basically ruling out gout. And the rheumatoid factor was off the charts. It was huge amount, huge tighter. So that was an example of a first episode of rheumatoid arthritis. But tying in her other features, it, there's a good chance that it may have been smoldering for, for some time and she just kept checking it off as arthritis um, with the history of the restrictive lung disease and the dry eyes. So sometimes it can be tricky to, to figure out with your first episode um, if it's just ordinary, did you just sprain your hand or is it your first gout attack or is it just ordinary arthritis? So typically if you're not sure and you do notice that the joints are not just swollen and, and sore, which would be typical for arthritis, but they're actually also, you can see that they're red and hot and swollen, you should actually go and see your uh, family doctor to get uh, checked. So the bad news about this thing is, uh, is a chronic condition, so it tends to wax and wane, it comes and goes and um, we're not really sure what causes it to flare up and what causes it to settle back down. And really bad news about it is with these repeated um, cycles of, of burn and bust, it causes damage to the joints eventually, especially in the fingers, so it eventually causes uh, deformities of the fingers, so it causes things like what we call swan neck deformities, I don't know if you could see that, like that, or um, uh, um, deformities of the ends of the digits, um, flattening out of the, the thumbs, um, and that can eventually make uh, life very difficult using utensils and opening doors and so forth, not just because of the pain from, from flare-ups, but also because of the deformity that occurs because of it. 
So to me, that's one of the reasons why it's kind of important to figure that out early um, what's going on because then you can alter the course of the disease. So the main stages of treatment are, one, you're trying to keep down the inflammatory process as much as possible. So usually you might use, say, like a, a once-a-day NSAID, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, basically based off of aspirin. Uh, in more advanced and severe cases, then you may use uh, d disease-modifying drugs and um, other immune suppressants, so stuff like um, uh, Plaquenil, and then there's also gold, which might sound a little surprising, um, and um, something called methotrexate. All of these um, guys here, what they do is they frustrate the immune system, basically kind of shutting it down. So that reduces the um, rheumatoid process. The NSAIDs basically just go into whatever joint is inflamed and kind of calm it down. It's almost like, like putting out a smoldering fire. So these are the basics that you should know about uh, rheumatoid arthritis. There's a lot more that could be said about it, but uh, that's it in a nutshell. So thanks for watching and stay well.